Now you can see they're running on sponge filters at the moment. This tank actually started to overflow, but now how about we look at some fish? So this is a bit of an impromptu video guys. I'm just filming this on my mobile phone. And as you can see, this is my five foot long Neolamprologus Lilipi Aquarium, Grout Aquarium. And above that, my white Alto Lamprologus Calvus Grout Aquarium, another five footer. Now you can see they're running on sponge filters at the moment. And that's because yesterday, as I was catching some of these Lilipi out of here to sell at the Super Club, this tank actually started to overflow. Uh, it's running on a sum system and something had happened to the bulkhead it wasn't blocked uh, so it was a bit of a mystery to me at the time so it turned out that there was something blocking the plumbing uh, that runs all the way down to the sump so I didn't have time to fix it yesterday afternoon so I rigged up this very dodgy looking uh, air pump uh, with an Irwin clamp on it without that clamp that pump will deafen you <laughs> so that clamp uh, suppresses the sound of the of the air pump and I've been running both aquariums on sponge filters since yesterday afternoon so what I've done to fix the blockage in the plumbing all the way to the sump is get the garden hose spray it into the bulkhead and waited for all the debris to clear out of this pipe so this pipe here and uh, it's a lot of debris came out uh, into the sump. So now I have to clean all the sponges in this part of uh, the sump. And I just simply now use a garden hose on, in the backyard, spray them with the hose, uh, and then pop them back in and that's fine. Because this is basically mechanical filtration here. I don't rely on this for biological filtration. This part, this chamber on my sump is uh, my biological filtration with all the lava rock and um, seek a matrix that's in here. So, gonna have to do have to do that today, clean those sponges out. So, um, what will happen if I don't clean these sponges out, water will overflow this uh, glass separator into the second compartment, bypassing all the sponges. So then what would happen then is all oh, this will get clogged up with debris. And I don't wanna have to do that because it will take a very long time to clean all that. I've had to do it once before in the three years that I've been running this system. And it took about a day to clean all the rock out. And uh, it's not good to do that because you will restart a cycle in, in your, uh, on your sump system. So I don't have to do that really ever again. So I'm always keeping the sponges clean. So I have to do that about once every six weeks. Uh, maybe if, if I'm a bit lazy and I only change a layer or two, maybe once a month. So, uh, because I'm running multiple tanks off this sump. But anyway, that's one thing I have to do today. And then once that's all clean, because I've just tested it now, this tank does not overflow anymore, which is great. So all I have to do now is clean those sponges so the uh, water doesn't spill into the second compartment over this glass barrier. And that will be good. That's one thing I'll do today. But now, how about we look at some fish? Some Neolampologus Lay Fry with their parents. Uh, they're having a bit of a spat at the moment. The male isn't happy with the female for some reason, even though she's done a fantastic job. She's actually raised two batches of fry at the same time, basically. Uh, she managed to protect the younger generation of fry from the older generation of fry. The age difference is about two weeks. Uh, but that two week difference is enough to have the larger fry prey on the smaller fry, the newer generation. So she did a very good job of protecting the new spawn from the larger fry. And if you look closely, you can see the two different sizes of fry if I don't scare them off. So there are loads in here. It's probably about uh, 300 fry in here. It's fantastic. Really proud of her. And uh, this happens occasionally where, you know, the male will go through this phase where he becomes overprotective of the fry and um, starts to attack the female. But he's just chasing her up in the corner. It will generally last a day or two. It's not too bad. Uh, it's best to keep her in the tank if you can. Just keep a watchful eye on her. Uh, and I also, I've also got the light on purely right now for the fry to feed and to film for you guys so you can see the fry. Uh, when, when the Leilupia are at this stage, I recommend you keep the light off. You could feed the fry with the light off. They'll, it's fine because there's other lights in the fish room that will help them see their, their, their food. Now you can see what's happening there. Uh, she's not submitting to him. She's trying to swim away. Uh, this is pretty much the extent of it. She might end up with a torn 
fin or two, but this generally lasts only a day or two, and then they they get back together and everything's okay. So uh, just 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 keep a watchful eye on it. Uh, it happens occasionally. Um, it's just the way lay loopies are. So I don't I do not recommend removing her from the tank because that will just make matters worse. Uh, it's best that they sort themselves out. Uh, she will be fine. Uh, and again, just have the lights off for a day or two until they resolve their issues and everything will be okay. So the tank next to this one is my other Neolamprologus Lelupi breeding pair. And you can see the amount of algae it has on the glass. That is fine. It is good for the fry. They feed off that algae. I don't scrape it off the sides of the tank. I leave it be. I just, scrape, I just clean the front pane so obviously I can see into the aquarium. Now, these guys were my original breeding pair of the four I bought. This is the first pair that bonded. And you can see the fry they have. This female struggles to raise more than one batch of fry at any time. Uh, but she's still a good... Uh, parent, good mother to her fry. Now, you see she's hiding in the top corner. She's having a bit of a spat with her uh, male as well, but uh, they're starting to reform their bond again. So what you'll, what you'll see is she'll start to kind of like shudder her body. She's like you saw there, when the male approaches, that's a sign of her submitting to his dominance and they're forming their bond again. Uh, so they've had a bit of a spat and it's what that's what uh, this pair will look like in a day or two. They will, they will get back together in a day or two. Just like this pair, their bond will form and everything will be okay. This occasionally happens. It's this little bit distressing, a little bit disheartening to see, but just stick with it. They will work it out. Do not remove the female from the aquarium because you'll make the bond worse. You'll potentially kill her reintroducing her to the male. So just leave them to be uh, in, the, in the aquarium together. They always sort themselves out. And again, just turn the light off. It really does suppress the amount of aggression that they show to their, towards their female and they can still see their food with all the other aquarium lights on in the fish room but uh, just having the lights off really does help okay on to the next aquarium these guys are doing really well these are not brevis sunspot they are in fact neolamprologus curiuris uh, much larger fish from lake tanganyika larger shell dweller their dad is up there you can see how big he is just swim away and uh they're quite large now, at a sellable size. So I'll be selling these guys. They're pushing uh, one and a half inches, some of them. Assume those are the males. These are all from, well, probably two or three batches of fry that were all in the aquarium at the same time. You see there are some smaller ones. One on there, just on the sand bed coming up. Pretty small compared to the others. But, uh, yeah, these guys aren't gonna be easy to catch either. One thing about these guys and Brevis, they're very uh, deceptive when trying to catch them with a net. The way they swim is, is, is very unusual, stop-start thing, and it's very confusing. So you can see the male up there again. Beautiful male. That's what they're destined to look like. So I've got to get this. There's a breeding pair in here. I've got to get them out of here, uh, out of this aquarium, and put them in a tank on the other system uh, that isn't on the sun. So these, all these tanks are on my sun system. I'm going to be putting them in their own tank, individual tank, where I do individual water changes on them. They don't need to be on the sun system to breed. Uh, so they're going in there, and uh, these guys will be all sold off soon. Next tank, my Neolamprologus ocellatus gold. Sorry, my Lamprologus ocellatus gold tank. This houses my breeding pair. You can see the amount of fry that they have. It's the first time I've seen this batch of fry come out of their shells. They've just had a feed of live microworms. And the good thing is the sump is off. So the microworms are staying in the water column for a very long time. And uh, these guys are having a good feed, their very first feed of their lives. You can see the amount of shells that I have in here and the way uh, the female and male have buried the shells, just having half the opening open. And that prevents predators from getting inside the shells and uh, just allows them, to, their own body, to fit into the shell. And I'll show you some of their other fry. All these guys. So you uh, are, these guys will be ready for sale in a month, probably another month or two. Not the fastest growers in the world, but uh, they're getting there. And uh, slowly getting back um, some Lampalogus Ocelotus Gold into the Sydney uh, market. So they're pretty rare at the moment. So I'm glad these guys will be out there soon. And I'll just show you this tank up here. Hopefully you can see in here as well. All Lamprologus Ocelatus Gold Fry. They all come up to the front. So this is another generation of fry. There's actually maybe two or three in here. Um, and uh, I got these guys in this aquarium about a week ago. So 
They haven't been away from their parents for too long, but I knew they had to get them out because the parents were starting to chase uh, the fry, the large fry away because they wanted to spawn again. Now the black calvert's looking beautiful. There's the big male. He is looking stunning. Beautiful fish. And he's two females at the back. There's actually another smaller calvus in this aquarium, uh, but he's only ever spawned with the one female. So they're looking great. And in this aquarium next to them is my white calvus spreading pair. And there's the male there, looking a bit stressed out because I'm in front of the aquarium. And his girl, his females in this shell here, I don't think they have fry. Uh, they did have a batch of fry. I moved the, the female out with the shell into an aquarium. Uh, however, I don't believe they have many fry. Uh, I think maybe five survived, so I'm a bit disappointed with that one. And I'm, I need to get them spawning again. Uh, especially the black calvus. Really want to get them spawning again. I haven't um, successfully raised uh, a batch of fry off them for a number of months now. And there's the smaller calvus, black calvus. This tank kind of looks messy. Uh, got some cyanobacteria on the, on the bottom of the tank. Uh, it's a bit hard to clear when uh, there's fry in this tank. So this is my Gelidocromus regani breeding pair. They do have two fry in here that are about a centimeter long. You can see them underneath the mother there. This is the female, look how beautiful she is. Stunning fish. So I recently took out all the larger fry that were about an inch and a half in here with, these, uh, with the parents. Uh, because they weren't able to raise a new batch of fry with an uh, older generation of fry in here. You can see the two fry that are in this tank. And uh, I believe they may have spawned. That's the male there. He's a lot smaller than the female. So I believe they may have spawned again. Um, now that I have removed all the fry, all the larger fry out of here. And I don't think, I don't think those two fry there are going to cause much harm to uh, the new spawn that they potentially have right now. I haven't seen any eggs, I haven't seen any fry, but I do believe I will see some fry in the coming days uh, emerge from this rock work. And here's the result of cleaning the sump. I cleaned three layers of sponges here. You can kind of make out on camera where the sponges are uh, that I didn't clean. They're kind of a little uh, lighter color looking and the sponges that I clean are kind of a darker black so that that's pretty good. You can see the water level now is at this level here and uh, I've got quite a bit of buffer room now with the separator. Uh, so water is flowing all the way down, down around the bubble trap and then flowing into the biological filtration site, which is what you want. You don't want water bypassing this bubble trap, this separator, uh, because then your sponges are too clogged up and you begin to clog up your biological filtration. So as you can see there, that's as pretty much as clean or as quick as the water will flow uh, with um, when, the, when the sponges are this clean. Uh, eventually, over the course of the next four to six weeks, that water level will rise and uh, as those sponges get clogged up, indicating to me that I need to clean them again. Anyway, so that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. And the fish are pretty happy as well. All the rocks are back in there. Obviously, I take the rocks out when I catch them. Uh, when I catch the fish, it's a lot easier when the ro with the rocks removed. And there's the beautiful white calvus, all happy again with the rocks returned. And this tank isn't overflowing anymore. So I'm happy about that as well. But there you go, guys, the July 2023 Fish Room Update Tour. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.